Congratulations, you're getting married. You have agreed to share your life with someone you love. How about sharing your finances, though? Here to break down the numbers is Jeannie on from Yahoo Finance. And certainly, this is so hard to talk about. We it can talk is. about so many other things when it comes to relationships, and then people get all nervous, and they marry people without knowing anything about their finances. And you can get into a lot of trouble that way. It's yeah. better for your marriage to talk about it as much as you can up front. But again, it's not a romantic conversation. No. When I had it with my husband-to-be at the yeah. time, I hid under the covers because we didn't come to agreement on many things. Really? You hid under the covers? Yes. I, didn't, I just didn't know how to handle it yeah. at all. So looking back on that, the things that I could have done or talked about are things like what are we bringing to the table? Mm -hmm. What are our incomes? What are our assets? Mm -hmm. What are the debts that we have that are going to be dealt with together? Mm -hmm. What are some financial obligations that you have, like loans and debts, but also are you going to be taking care of a parent? You know, charities, Do you are, are you planning on giving 10% of our money away? And am I on the same page with that? Maybe, maybe not. Then also, how are we going to bring our finances together? Separate? or combining right, them. Right, especially when maybe you have two people who don't make the same amount of money. Yes. So how do you split the bills? Is it gonna be equal? It's There's a lot of stuff. You know, there's, my husband is a finance major, so he has no problem talking about finance. Mm. But one question that I never even considered was the impact that getting married would have on my taxes. Oh, right. And that it really did shift for me. It does. So what, tell me a little <laughs> bit more about that, yeah. Well, my financial advisor says that you should bring your tax returns to the table and go over them. Hmm. And you have to be very, you know, very serious and in a good stage of relationship to be able to do that. Yeah. But what surprised me is also that getting married doesn't really help your tax situation all that much. I always heard, oh, you're going to get all these tax benefits. Yeah. But if you are making similar amounts and it's a two income household, that could put you in a higher tax bracket and also it. The, the huge tax advantages might not be there. That said, mm -hmm. there are hi the highest standard deductions with married filing jointly. And if you have dependents in the picture, of course, you get you know lower tax income liability there. Right, that, that's a really good point because you can be married and and file separately. You can. My accountant says it's probably not a good idea. Yes, for most people, yeah. married filing jointly does make the most sense. But you can ask them, can you prepare my taxes separately? What are the numbers? Right. And I think when you first get married, it's good to see that difference. All right, now for a lot of people, the biggest liability that they walk into a marriage with is their student loan. Right. Um, yeah. Tell me about that because that's always the debt that you just can never get rid of but if I paid off my student loan and I marry someone with a tremendous student loan do I also take on that debt? So you are not responsible for any debt that you don't have before, right? But any anything that your spouse brings to the table, he's responsible on his own before marriage. That said, in a relationship, when you are married, if that person defaults on their student loans and you are having to file your taxes together, mm -hmm. your taxes will be garnished. Uh, oh my gosh, that's yes. good to know. That's why you have to know how <laughs> much do you owe on those student loans, yeah. right? Um, what about combining your checking and savings accounts? Is it a good idea? It depends for every situation. Okay. You know, it, it also depends on your values, and it also depends on whether or not how, much, how many assets you're talking about. Right. But for household to household, just make sure that this is a difficult conversation to have. You might want to bring in a third party, say, hey, why don't we go to a financial consultant for free for the first 30 minutes and let them ask us some questions yeah. and then see, you know, if you can kind of defer some of that negative yeah. energy around this conversation to an impartial party. That is great <laughs> advice because that was going to be the last question that I had for you is just how do you bring this up yeah. without you know causing a big explosion and getting a third party in who's mm -hmm. not going to be judging you because they see all kinds of finances yes. is a perfect idea. Another thing is call it a dream date. Say hey let's let's have a dream date where we talk about our money dreams, our financial goals, <laughs> what we want to accomplish. Our money nightmares. <laughs> Yeah. But call it a dream, you know, and that way the, the tone is much more positive. There's excitement around it. You guys can talk about your, you know, your future retirement in another mm. country together, how often you plan on traveling, you know, that kind of thing. Right. I love that. That's how you, that's how you get sort of get over some of the touchy stuff. Another thing that's really touchy, mm. prenups. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. 
how do you bring that up and you know what's the benefit I mean is it something that everyone should kind of be talking about well prenuptial agreements are great for protecting your assets that you bring that you have before mm -hmm. as, as well as the assets that grow during your marriage and they're there so that you are not going into litigation or ma major problems down the line mm -hmm. if in the event of a divorce right but of course it's not there's a lot of negativity around that Yeah, because you're know, <laughs> planning for the divorce before we even get married you know exactly yeah. that's why all the other money topics that we just discussed having that conversation first then makes it easier if you want a prenup to bring the prenup conversation up because at least that's the legally binding document to everything that you're talking about yeah. so that makes it a little bit more easier if that's what you want to do I love it that is news you can use very good <laughs> advice Jeannie on thank you so much thank you